On this railway adventure, a castle of a Welsh king and a journey into the earth as we travel Wales by the Blyneye Festiniog Railway and British Rail. Hi, I'm Bernie Coppell. Just up the tracks, slate mines and the home of a man who changed the world. Join me from Porth Madog to Festiniog on Railway Adventures Across Europe. We're about to travel into the heart of Wales. Although it's a small country, its people have had a great impact on the world. Throughout history, they've battled to maintain their spirit of independence. It should be no surprise that a Welshman founded the League of Nations for the sake of freedom and peace worldwide. Our adventure begins on the coast in Porth Madog. From there, by two railways, we'll travel to Blyneye Festiniog and the Slate Mines. During our travels, we'll see castles of both Llewellyn the Great and Edward I, and an Italian-inspired Welsh village. We'll also tour slate mines by battery-powered train at the boyhood home of a man who changed the world. All this and the scenic splendor of Wales by British Rail and the Festiniog Railway. All aboard for Heart of Freedom. Our railway adventure begins in the tiny country of Wales. It's an ancient land of proud and fiercely independent people and beautiful rugged landscapes. The native language is not English, as we will see from the names of villages on our Welsh adventure. The Welsh language and heritage are actually Celtic. And the best way to learn the history, language and landscape of Wales is to travel the historic Blyneye Festiniog Railway from Harlech to Blyneye Festiniog. The history of the Festiniog Railway begins in the early 19th century. Then the small country of Wales was no more than a beautiful and remote mountain area whose people managed to live by farming. In 1789, the same year the French Revolution began, William Alexander Maddox arrived in Wales. He accomplished almost as great a revolution in this rugged land. Maddox's adventures, mostly reclaiming land from the sea, almost left him bankrupt. One project involved building a great bank of land, known as the Cobb, to block off the river Glasland. But Maddox soon began thinking of slate. He then turned inland to the present-day city of Blyneye Festiniog. He built a port for shipping slate produced in Festiniog. And in 1828, Maddox began building the forerunner of today's Festiniog Railway. Reminders of this railway can still be seen today. The loaded slate trains traveled to the port driven by gravity alone. The empty cars were returned by horses. The railroad was built by hand. The workers used simple hand tools, horses, and black powder to carve the route out of the hardy Welsh mountains. In spite of the lack of tools, the railway opened officially on April 20th, 1836. As the railway began to make money and business increased, steam instead of gravity was used to drive the engines. The company even decided to take passengers. However, the gauge on this railway was too narrow for steam locomotives in the 1840s. So it wasn't until October of 1863 that the Festiniog Steam Railway was open for business. The declining demand for slate forced the railway to close on August 1st, 1946, after more than 100 years of service. However, a new railway era began in the 1950s. In Britain, people who wanted to preserve the picturesque railways began a major restoration movement. It took 31 years of hard work and dedication to rebuild the Festiniog Railroads. 
On May 23, 1982, the first restored passenger train entered the Blyney Festiniog station. Our railway adventure on the Festiniog Railway in Wales will begin along the coast at Harlech, where the rugged Welsh mountains run down to the sea at Cardigan Bay. Harlech has been immortalized in songs and stories. Here, the courageous men of Harlech resisted the invading English soldiers, who tried to subdue the Welsh in 1468. The city's impressive castle was built by Edward I in the 1200s on the site of a Celtic fortress. Edward hoped to use this and other castles in Wales to overcome the fierce Welsh resistance to an English takeover. Later in its life, Harlech Castle would be the last castle in Great Britain to be subdued by Oliver Cromwell's men in the English Protestant rebellion against Catholic Charles I in the 1600s. Across the Tremadog Bay from Harlech stand the ruins of another magnificent castle. On our next stop, Krikia. This castle was established around 1230 in the time of Llewellyn the Great, the last Welsh king. Sacked and burned in 1404, the castle was never restored. Krikiath is a typical Welsh seaside resort. It offers fine hotels, as well as rail and road links that make it the best place from which to tour the Fleen Peninsula. Two miles northeast of Krikiath is the small village of Llanestymdui, here is where Britain's World War I Prime Minister, David Lloyd George, spent much of his early life. Lloyd George lived in this tiny house with his mother and uncle. In 1916, he was elected the 36th Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Today, he is remembered for establishing the League of Nations at the end of World War I in 1919. At the end of his distinguished career, Lloyd George returned to this charming village and spent many hours sitting in this tranquil spot which now marks the site of his grave, overlooking the beautiful river Dwyfor. East of Krakia is the major town of the area, Porth Madog. Here, the rail journey to the small slate mining city of Blaenau Festiniog begins. The beautiful city of Porth Madog was a shipping town. The proud sailing vessels of the 1800s that carried slate across the seas had been replaced by pleasure yachts of all sizes. Across the harbor, the Festiniog Railway has its station at Harbor Station. Every year in the spring, the Festiniog Railway holds a festival weekend. At that time, all the steam engines are brought out on parade. This is Rishra, being prepared for the festival. This engine is probably the smallest industrial engine ever exported from Britain. It was sold to India, but returned to Wales and restored in 1971. On another siding is Shalona, a rare vertical boiler engine. This weekend, Shalona is giving rides to visitors. Inside the buildings are many displays and models, including this incredible O-gauge model steam railway.
During this weekend, photo sessions are set up especially for the visitors, and the engine workshops are open to the public. The engineers demonstrate new, modern equipment as well as old. Back outside of the Festiniog Railway's harbour station in Wales, the steam locomotive Mountaineer prepares the train for the festival. Mountaineer will take us to the town of Festiniog. This engine was built by an American engine company in Patterson, New Jersey. Originally built for the War Department, Mountaineer was used in France during World War I. It was donated to Festiniog in 1967. After traveling two miles, Mountaineer slides into Meanforth Station. Just a half a mile from the station stands the famous Italian-inspired village of Port Marion. Set in 70 acres of subtropical woodland in a narrow valley, Fourth Marion offers ever-changing scenes of architectural and natural beauty. The incredible village was built by Sir Clough Williams Ellis between 1925 and 1972. He intended to develop this beautiful site without spoiling it. No doubt about it, he succeeded. There is a first-class hotel on the ground, and many of the cottages can be rented for vacations and weekends. Back at Meanforth Station, the festivities are in full swing. An antique player piano provides background music while railway staff parade in period costumes. One of the most popular attractions this weekend is the chance to be the engineer of a steam locomotive. Britomart was built in Leeds, England in 1899. Unlike the oil-burning Festiniog engines, Britomart still burns coal. All ages can enjoy a ride on this railway. Here is a scale model of a Darjeeling Himalayan railway engine. On the sidings, the gravity slate train is preparing to run. In the past, the fully loaded slate wagons ran the full 13 and a half miles down to the harbor at Port Madog by gravity alone, controlled only by brakemen. Once unloaded, the empty wagons were hauled back to Blindy Festiniog by horses. The slate train is hauled up the line to just below the next station at Pantheen and released. After a gentle push, it runs by gravity back to the Meanforth yard. The only control the brakemen have is a simple handbrake system. With careful synchronization and skill, they can still manage to bring the heavy slate wagons to a gentle halt. Now it's back on board the train for the climb to the next station, Penflin. 
The train needs a double engine because of the steep climb through the rugged Welsh mountains. After a short stop at Penfleet, the train heads for Tanabu. Once outside of Penfleet, the line runs mostly through the beautiful forest. Branches from the trees threaten to scrape the sides of the trains at times. Just out of Tanabu, seven and a half miles from Portmato, the train encounters a steep gradient. Here is where the two engines are really needed. Climbing high above the beautiful valley, the train approaches one of the technical marvels of the railway. At the next station, Theolst, the engineers reconstructing the line in the 1950s faced a major problem. They could not use the original steam route to Festiniog because the central electricity generating board had built a reservoir for electrical generation on the original track. So the engineers had to construct the railway higher to bypass the reservoir. The original Festiniog railway line continued to the old Moylwyn Tunnel. To gain height, the new line had to be built in an open spiral, unique in Britain, before continuing through a new tunnel higher up the mountainside. Here's the best view of the spiral. The first part is hidden in the trees, but once in the open, the line crosses over itself before swinging around behind this small hill. Emerging once more, the train completes its 360-degree turn. The root of the old track bed and many of the original timbers can still be seen beneath the new embankment. Now through Moylewin Tunnel, the train sweeps around the reservoir at Tani Grishia and arrives at the station of the same name. This reservoir has tamed and harnessed the power of the humble mountain stream through pumped hydroelectric generating stations. The designers of this station took great care to make the least environmental impact. Local stone was used, and only one-third of the building is visible above ground. At peak periods, this station is capable of sending 360 megawatts of electricity from four enormous turbines into the national electric grid in under 60 seconds. At full output, the water leaves the upper reservoir 233 yards higher up the mountain at a rate of 132 million gallons per hour. The station was dedicated in 1963 by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. Visitors are welcome and guided tours are available seven days a week. But now, back to the rail. The final section of the railway runs between houses on the outskirts of Blyneye Festinio. Man-made mountains of slate waste, a reminder of the past, surround the town. Visitors can take buses from the center of town to the slate mines at Fleckwave, on the outskirts of Blyneye Festinio. There an exhibit, a guided tour, and practical examples demonstrate in graphic detail how slate was mined. The quarry is still active today. Visitors must wear hard hats. The small battery-powered train is well protected, though. Don't worry about the fact that the tunnel is just inches above you. Once inside, a guide explains how miners drilled the rock with only primitive tools in almost total darkness. Slate exhibits inside the mine illustrate the harsh conditions miners used to work under. Emerging once again into the daylight, be sure to see the slate being cut by an expert. The slate must be initially split and then cut down to the required size. Our railway adventure on the Festiniog Railway ends with a return trip to Porth Madog. We'll have plenty of time to reflect on the enduring spirit and strength of the people in this tiny country of rugged landscapes. Wales is known for its rugged beauty, the independent spirit of its people, ancient Celtic heritage, and its slate mines. We hope you've enjoyed Heart of Freedom. I'm Bernie Coppell. Join me on the next Railway Adventures Across Europe.
see you on the next World's Greatest Train Ride Video Adventure.